What can I say here? About this way of I found one on eBay capturing uh, the flyback, the high voltage. Now the high voltage flyback. Okay. Um, here you have. How do I do this? Here you have a battery on the left. It's a source power for your driving circuit. The driver is a coil being pulsed and basically capt capturing the reverse flyback of that coil. That's the driver for your high voltage. The flyback is high voltage. It's super high voltage with very minimal current. Okay, now keep that in mind. It's super high voltage, okay? Super high pressure. Now, when you dump that high, I've already done this and, and I don't think it's the way to go. Uh, when you dump the flyback into a capacitor and then store up some amps and lower the voltage some, and then you push it over to a battery, how well is that battery going to capture that pressure compared to the flyback? pressure <clears throat> but the flyback pressure is orders of magnitude greater than the pressure coming from the capacitor that you dump some flyback into over let's say 10 seconds you built up some amps you lowered the volts from 500 volts 900 volts to you lowered it from 900 volts to like let's say 50 volts which is what i was planning on doing and then you dump the capacitor at 50 volts into the battery now here's my point with all this. When it comes to transferring potential or pressures, to, to guarantee or to increase efficiency of that transfer, if you have a higher potential to work with to make that transfer, you should use that. Uh, because the higher the potential is, the more that higher potential is gonna push into that lower potential. Now you take, let's say a thousand volt flyback signal, drop it down to 50 volts, like. 45 volts, whatever Bedini was doing with a comparator dump, then you lower your potential. And then when it, you know, to, to push that 50 volt potential into the battery is going to be less effective. Okay. Because it's a lower potential. That's my opinion on all that. So I decided to go the other way, uh, not to use capacitors. And I tried this and I ran it overnight and it's, uh, it has a slow drop in voltage. Uh, it's not uh, huge, but it, it's, it's not holding power per se because I was taking the high voltage spike, dropping its potential, and then from there I was taking that potential and pushing it back into the source battery. That was the problem. Now what I plan to do is take the high potential flyback, um, and in this video here, what happens is the battery on the left, see the plus and minus on the battery, you know, is where the flyback is going to hit, the plus and minus of the flyback from the inductor, which is powered by pins five and six on the right there of the uh, relay, double pole, double pole relay. So what happens here is, this is supposed to allow the battery more time than not to receive the flyback signal. Um, so the capacitor bank will be running the circuit and the switch here on A will be open and the flyback will be hitting the battery all by itself. In this way, I am moving energy from the battery on the left into the capacitor bank on the right with a brief switching of switch A, all while the capacitor bank on the right is and has been powering the inductor, the, the, the pulse the frequency and that inductor will fly back into the same battery. So why am I doing that instead of dumping it into the capacitor and then dumping the capacitor into the battery? See, that's not what this circuit's doing here. That's the comparator circuit. Uh, it, it dumps power from the flyback into the capacitor, builds it up, then it dumps it into the battery. That's not what I'm doing. I am dumping power from the battery into the capacitor bank, using the capacitor bank to run the flyback. And then I'm dumping the flyback into the battery all by itself for about 90% of the, of the time or 90 as, as much as that time as I can do it for without the capacitor bank dropping too low in voltage. So what I'll do here is close switch a uh, in a brief, just long enough to charge to keep the capacitor bank charged and then switch a will open up again and the capacitor bank will keep running the flyback to hit this battery on the left all by itself. Why that way is better in my opinion, because the flyback is a much higher potential than the capacitor would be if you were to dump some flyback into the capacitor and then dump it into the battery. So you have less efficiency in transfer from one location to the other because you're using a lower potential. So that's what I think about, you know, using the flyback. Um, 
you know, I suggest doing it the original way, but then you had it. Dump the flyback straight to the other battery or to the battery. You can do it with one battery. And this system allows you to do it with one battery because of the capacitor. They're, they're taking the position of the run battery and they're keeping themselves charged with a, brief, with a brief closing of switch A to charge up and then switch A opens and, and the battery can go back to receiving flyback all on its own without being having a capacitor being part of that flyback capture. You'll notice here when the switch is closed, the flyback is still happening. So it will cross through whatever the battery does capture, will, you know, voltage wise, will cross through to the capacitor bank, hit the capacitor there in the bottom. That's a high voltage capacitor. It's there to protect the low voltage uh, super cap bank. And this should work fine. And, you know, this is basically the two battery system with one battery replacing the drive battery with the capacitor. And I think it's more efficient and effective to to charge your, your battery or your storage systems with flyback, not not a comparator dump, not a capacitor dump. But that's efficient. Also, it's more efficient than not using a capacitor dump. But in my opinion, I think it's more efficient to use the flyback to charge your battery and use capacitors instead of to dump the built up flyback, use them to run your drive circuit. Okay, guys. Over now. <laughs>